Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bowhunter Die, where Mr. Famous Sir Zar puts down a buck before me. Infamous, I would say. Infamous? More than, more than famous. But okay. yes, I well. was lucky enough to shoot a buck before you. Although it wasn't as big as the one you shot. But hey, it is what it is. Box I got one tag filled. Let's check out these hunts right now. All right, evening number one, Fulton County Farm, November 1st. It's beautiful. High pressure, sunny, cold, southwest wind. I'm trying to decide where I want to go. Do I go to the side of the farm where I saw the biggest rubs and a lot of beds? Or do I go to a ridge top? I think I'm just gonna freaking spot where I saw that big buck bed and all those does and there's cut corn I'm just I want to get to that spot so it's not what I was planning on but chan plans have changed I don't have time to kind of go where I wanted to go I'm hoping to be set up by now so I'm going to plan B which is edge of this CRP where it goes into this corn all of that timber there is ours so we're gonna hope to catch some deer coming out of that timber to that corn I think the deer are bedded in there we're gonna catch them coming out I'm probably gonna set up kind of in those trees right there. There's a bit of a flat spot. Dips down. There's a bunch of beds up there, so that's gonna be our spot.
That's how my luck goes. That tree over there is the first tree I picked when I came in here, based on all the sign. And then I looked and I was like, nah, I'm gonna get back in this woods a little bit. Just so I'm in the cover a little bit more and not right on that edge. Both those deer walked right underneath that tree. That first one only had one half, but that second buck was nice. Probably 140 inch eight pointer. Literally walked probably 10 yards in front of the tree that I picked. That's my luck. All right, well, it's been pretty slow so far. Morning one here. I don't even know what time it is. Hour after daylight, anyways. 8.15. I've seen, uh, two, three, four, I don't know, four or five does. I waited for, for daylight to come in here because I didn't want to be wandering around in the dark. I didn't know where I was going to. So this is the same tree that Josh has been hunting out of the last couple days. It had some pretty good encounters, so. Hopefully something moves through with antlers. Biggest problem with this stand is the wind direction. I think Josh had more of a Northwest, where I've, I got a south southwest, so it's not the best, but oh well. And it's freaking freezing. Probably only gonna make it about two hours before I have to get out of here. It is cold. It's a little after 10 o'clock, so I think we're gonna give it a few more minutes and call it a morning. You know, rattled in that nice buck. He just came from the wrong direction. And I think he must've got a little spooky. He must've caught a little, little bit of my wind. He never ran and spooked. He was definitely interested in what was going on up here, but he kind of circled around, came down here, just, just wouldn't commit. I think he was at one point, maybe 40 yards, but this side of the stand here, you can't, you can't shoot anything. They need to be up on this, this top side. So, all in all, not a bad morning. One shooter buck, a bunch of does. It's two hunts, two shooters. Let's try to continue that tonight, but hopefully in bow range <laughs> with a clear shooting line at the right angle. All right, good evening, night number two here in the old Fulton County, the FC. It's November 2nd. Had two great hunts so far. Two hunts, two shooters. Let's hope we go three for three and he's close enough to shoot this time. I'm going to a spot that I picked out on a topo map for the very first time. Todd sent me a map of this farm. It's a spot that I picked out. Look at these trees. This place 
is just littered with deer. It's un unreal how many deer this place has on it compared to the farms that I normally hunt. You can see over here, the biggest problem with this farm is all this open timber. You, know, you walk through a spot like this, they're just bedded up in this knee-high brush. And they can see you. It's like the biggest problem with this, this whole farm is just access. There's just no sneaking around. Don't make fun of my gum. I like to have fresh breath. And I'm a little bit like, I don't know, ADD. I like to have something to chew on. I'm going on the top of that ridge right there. That looks far. Right about, right about there. This is where I'm gonna start cutting up this hill. You can see there's a cut that runs right up there. I wanna be at the top of that cut. Southwest wind in my face, hopefully. So we're gonna go look for a trail to take. Well, hello there. It's about 3.30, we are all set up. In total, I think that took me about an hour and a half. I mean, I'm glad I left when I did. I had a pretty far walk to get back here. Took it nice and easy. I was gonna come up. It's kind of like a single draw down there. And then it wise into two, two smaller draws. They both end. Right about here. There's another draw that goes up and it ends up there. So I originally thought I was going to set farther up there, but with the way this wind is going, I decided I was going to pull back to go right at the top of these two draws. This is the spot I picked on the map when I first got access to this farm on a south wind. I said this is pretty close to where I wanted to be, so I guess we're going to find out if I picked a good spot or not.
<laughs> I didn't want him to, uh, to get over here. I probably could have let him go a little bit more and get a better angle, but at that distance, oh, he was about to get my wind. I think that arrow went all the way through him. That pop sounded good. He jumped down the hill. I didn't see him come up the other side, so. In the great broadhead debate of the world, there's always two schools of thought. Cutting size and penetration. It's times like these when you like cutting size. <laughs> That's a Spitfire triple X. Two inch cut, three blade. That went through them, so. I cannot believe I botched that. I knew he was close in quarter two, but he was so, so close. I was like, God, I got this. I got a toe right in front of me. A fawn in front of me and the big ones back there. I don't know what our problem is. Um, problem is I'm headed towards the neighbors that way. All right, I tore everything down. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna pick up the arrow real quick. Here somewhere, I don't see it. White hair. Blood. Blood. All right, so we've got blood at impact here. As well I'm at about 200 yards and at about the 125 130 yard mark he just opened up and the blood trail was unbelievable it was like somebody was pouring out a bucket of red paint I thought he would be laying literally around the next bend 
And then he got down into this deadfall. And he clearly stood there for a while, bedded down a couple of times. There was just blood everywhere. I've never seen so much blood. And then he got up and went over the log and started walking into the neighbor's property. So I had to back out, which was probably the smart thing to do anyways. Clinton shot a buck tonight, so we're going to go help him and uh, come up with a plan, figure out what we're going to do. If it's going to be tonight or the morning, probably the morning, but I want to check the weather, see how cold it's going to be tonight. Because I had to think that deer's dead. I mean, if he's not dead now, he's going to die. There's no way a deer lives with that much blood loss. I know we say that a lot, but that was ridiculous. So getting out of here and we'll check back in a little while. All right, guys, morning after. So today is the third. It's about eight o'clock. Johnny and I just got to the property. We waited for daylight. You know, I've said this before to people, but I hate tracking deer at, at night, especially if I don't know 100% that they're dead or how far they went. It's just such a pain in the ass. So uh, we just called the called the neighbor and he said, yep, go do what you gotta do in the morning. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna head down to the fence crossing where he went into the neighbors and hopefully he's not too far in there and there's a happy ending. Got my buddy Johnny with, it's gonna be a good day. hundred yards in and we still got awesome blood so we're just gonna keep going hopefully he's gonna be up here somewhere uh, dude. <laughs> yes oh, we got him <laughs> then I looked up and I'm like white belly right there dude oh my goodness so nothing ate him either <laughs> which is a good thing oh no they did eat a little bit of his back end shoot Oh, baby. Yep. <laughs> Got him. That a boy. Thanks, Congrats, Hermie. Buddy. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys. What what an adventure this has been. You know, this is a new farm that, that Todd and I picked up for this year. Uh, we came down here in September for one day, and I walked this entire place. And before I ever stepped foot on this farm, when I looked at the topo maps on Hunt Stand, the top of that ridge is where I wanted to be. And finally, last night, I decided to get up there. I snuck up the backside of this ridge, hung the saddle. And uh, fortunately, this guy came in and, you know, unfortunately, he came behind me where I wasn't expecting the deer to be. And he was, any second, he was going to get my wind. Uh, so I figured it was now or never. Unfortunately, it was not the best shot I've ever made in my life. You can see the entry here looks perfect. Um, but just given the angle that he was at, it came down, it came out pretty much right on the bottom of them. So when we open them up, we'll find out exactly what I got. My guess is I got a single lung. This deer bled more than I think any deer I've ever shot in my life. He made it almost 500 yards, I think, um, bedded up here in this power line cut. And unfortunately the coyotes got to a little bit of his back end, but not too bad. We'll be able to sell it, salvage the majority of the meat. So just a nice 10 pointer, great deer for me. You know, first time on this farm, this was my third sit. I'd seen three shooters and three sits. Uh, I was doing pretty good. So yeah, I'm extremely happy. My kids are happy and I'm coming home. My son is anxious. He wants me to take him hunting to hopefully get another buck this year. I've created a monster, but yeah, very happy with this deer. Thank you to Johnny for coming out and helping. Thanks for Clint and for letting me sleep at his place. Go hunt or die, boys. Well, the one thing I'm gonna point out right off the bat, Justin, which I have to admit, I, you know, is something that I found pretty cool with your hunt is, you know, the first time that me, you and Paul went out there and we searched and kind of scouted that property. You're a lone wolf, dude. You like to do things your own way. He, he actually informed me that he doesn't want me to film him, but I might just veto and use my present <laughs> title. I have to go film him uh, later this week or next week. But you know what? He's got a way of doing things. He was using hunt stand. And I tell you, there was this one spot where, I mean, me and Paul actually were together at the time. We, we could see Justin almost milling around like a, a deer eating acorns. He was really kind of investigating the spot. And it was cool to see the spot when I asked you that morning, hey, where are you hunting? And you're like, don't you remember? And you drew and you so, showed it to me on hunt stand right where you wanted to be. And boom, money, dude, you chose the spot. That's right where you wanted to be. And dude, you smoked your buck. So that's cool. I don't know that I smoked him per se. He's but dead. I, but he's dead now. But yeah, I feel like anytime you go into a new piece of property, 
like topography is always the first thing I look at to figure out where I want to be. You know, and there's some times where you get in there and the topography looks one way on a map and you get there and you're like, eh, this isn't actually going to work. That whole so property. <laughs> yeah. But in this particular case, like, I was like, you know, even having walked there earlier and, and being like, I'm not really sure about it. Like, there was something that just kept gnawing at me, like, I, this is where I should be, at least as a starting point. You know, and I ended up kind of a draw over from where I wanted to be again, because once I got up there, I was like, okay, this is the spot I picked, yeah. but it's not exactly what I want. I'm like, let me keep going until I kind of find what I want. Because I think if there's anything that I've learned over the years when you're doing these hang and hunt spots is like, don't get into a spot that you don't like. Because I've made that mistake where I'm like, this is good enough. I'm going to have to hunt here tonight. I'm looking at the time, yeah. you know, whatever. And I climb up in a tree and it's just like, ah, this isn't where I want to be, and I feel like I'm wasting that. <laughs> I made that mistake the other day. So in this particular case, that's what I did. I moved over till I found the spot I wanted to be. You know, I trimmed everything out beautifully in front of me. I climbed up, I turned around, and there was like one branch hanging behind me, and I could see a trail back there, and I was like, gosh, that's straight downwind. But if something comes there, like maybe I'll get a shot. And I remember like I had to like loosen up my tether on my saddle. I'm like reached all the way out because all I had was a handsaw. I'm trying to cut this one limb, you know, and it turns out that's where that deer ended up going. And, you know, I think they, you know, hindsight is always 2020. I wish I would have let them walk a little bit further. You know, we had a southwest wind that night, but with the topography, it was kind of more due south to almost southeast. So I think I had a few more yards to spare. But you know what? It's interesting how things play through your head in that heat of the moment. Clinton had a, an encounter with an absolute mega giant, like a 190, like Huge. the night before. Huge. And w he doesn't know if the wind swirled or he didn't like the decoy or whatever, but all that kept playing through my head was when that deer stopped and finally either saw or smelled something he didn't like, he <laughs> whirled and took off, right? And never gave him an opportunity to shot. And I kept thinking, like, any second that's going to happen. And I'm sitting there going, it's, it's do or die. Like, I need to do this right now. And that was one of those shots where I feel like when you execute perfectly, it's a fine shot. But you have a very, very low margin of error on yeah. that particular shot. And unfortunately for me, it was just a couple inches too low, you know, from how high up I was. And he was downhill. So I ended up... But great blood trail. I mean, you... Yeah, I mean, dude, I, I, I got lucky. Super lucky. I got one blade of that broadhead that entered the cavity and cut one, the bottom of one lung. But the, the biggest thing that benefited me on that, well, I guess two things. Number one, big cutting diameter broadhead. I know we talk about there's this debate between uh. cutting diameter and you know fixed blade versus mechanical. In this case, 100%, the big cutting diameter saved my butt. The one problem blade. with that debate is like it's, it's so dependent on the shot. Or, sure, 100%. <laughs> or, or yeah, you hit him you know. in the scapula and you're going, man, I wish I had a fixed blade, right? right I mean, I got a pass through now and I got so, it. That and then the fact that the exit was low. It was literally dead center in the bottom of his chest. Mm. So it was basically like you installed a drain in his chest cavity. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and there was just, you know, he made it still almost 500 yards. And again, in hindsight, I probably could have went in there that night and got him. We had to back out. We yeah. had to contact the neighbor. Obviously, he wasn't all super, super thrilled about me going in there because he's a big hunter. He had sure. been hunting. You know, and ultimately we just decided to wait for the next morning, which, you know, the coyotes got the back end of them a little bit, but, you know, it is what it is. There's this balance between, I don't know if he's really dead or what should I do. And in this when case, in doubt, we decided back to out, you got your deer and yeah, and it was a good hunt. So Yeah, no, I had a blast, saw an absolute ton of deer. You know, there's obviously a few more good bucks, I think, running around in there. So maybe we'll make a trip back. You know, think we before should. the the gun season comes, but yeah, I'd love to film you down there. <laughs> and I would love to sit in a tree with you, Todd. It'd be a great time. <laughs> All right, everybody. Next up, we're going to do an Ask the Experts question. Brought to you, of course, by the fine folks at Lancaster Archery. I got this nice flannel on today. Uh, so our question comes from Lee. Newhauser, I believe is how you say that. He says, with all the new bridge lock technology on the Matthews bows, do I even need a sidebar to balance my setup? That's a great question. Let's see what our buddy, Mr. PJ Riley, has to say. All right, guys, so we have a question from a bow hunter who's asking, you know, with the Matthews bows, 
he mentions just the bridge lock technology, which is gonna be the cutout in the riser here where your sight goes through. And then they also have now their bridge lock stabilizer systems. Uh, but coupled with that, they also employ the integrate style rests. Basically what Matthews has done is added all these features so we can really streamline this bow, take things off the side and move them into the center. So what he wants to know is with all those advances, does he really need a side rod? Great question. And that's a personal question um, that you have to evaluate for yourself. But remember, a, a side rod is not just about balancing the bow this way. Side rod is also about balancing your bow this way. You can see here, I've got weight coming off the back. Well, one of the things that that does is counter my weight off of the front. So my bow doesn't tip forward with that side rod back there. It balances forward and back. And that's a personal preference. You know, you can see here, I've got 15 inch rod off the front and then I've got the eight inch rod off the back. That just helps me, especially shooting long range, uh, just makes my bow overall feel balanced at full draw. Um, but so just consider that when you're thinking about a side rod, that you're not only balancing this way, you're also balancing forward and back. Well, thank you as always to PJ and the folks at Lancaster Archery. Guys, remember the Lancaster Classic is coming up in January. Signups are available and open right now. Come join the bow hunter class. Shoot with me, Todd, Paul, and the rest of the crew. I think Ryan Cornelius said he's going to come Cornelius is coming. We've seen him on the show here recently. So it's going to be a good time. Make sure you guys register. Uh, next up, we're going to go into trophy photos. Todd is no longer allowed to pick or uh, comment or do anything. He's banished there. from trophy photos forever. You're allowed to read names, but that's it. <laughs> no. We have to protect you from yourself, Todd. You ready? Let's <laughs> we're go. We're fine. People understand. <laughs> Eric Peterson, Minnesota. Isaac Odell, Michigan. Isaac Schmidt, Minnesota. Lindsey K in Ohio. Mike Peterson, Ohio. And Nick Perry in South Dakota with a great buck. So congratulations Come to on, everybody. Put them out here. These are all great deer, but I'm picking the winner this week, and we're not insulting anybody, Todd, <laughs> as advised by our PR firm, uh, Isaac Odell out of Michigan. Great buck, great pose. I would I, I I have chose Nick, Nick, but... I could see white belly, Todd. That's true. My white belly is always out. White belly. I, I yelled Isaac at Scott. Schmitz here is good, too, but I'm going Isaac Odell. It's a great photo, great buck, well posed. Congrats to Lindsay Gotta get those and white Mike. Belly Mike sent me Lindsay's photo and said we had to use it. So, But he already knew we didn't have a weapon in the picture, Ooh. so she was ineligible. Sorry. Oh, it's talking, he's talking about me giving people a hard time. Hey, I just said ineligible. I didn't insult their weapon of choice, Todd. I did not so, do that. So congratulations to everybody on some fine animals. Isaac Odell, make sure you get us your information. But we let's just really quickly talk pack. about the beginning of sweet November here. Holy moly. This might be a record for bow hunter die. We've got almost seven or eight bucks down in, in the like three or four days. Like it's span. unbelievable. So it started with Herman killed one. The same night I shot right, mine. Right, I was at you. And then that was what, the second? So I recovered mine on the morning of the third. Miller killed his big one on the morning of the fourth. You shot one on the fourth. Morning. Morrison shot one, not Morrison, Paul. Paul, yeah. Not, the yeah. other well, Paul. Well, 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 Paul Morrison well, got Paul one Morrison too. Paul Morrison got one the other day. Paul Bossardette killed one the morning of the fourth. Kurt shot one last night. Who are we missing? Clinton shot one the Fawcett night. Fawcett shot days. one the night that I left Fulton County to come home. Yep. Yeah, it's out of control. It's unbelievable. It's We've got control. some serious bow hunting action coming your we way. We need Rector and Frankie to kill. Those boys Chad are Chad and people. Matt. Gussie needs to kill one. And this could be, come on Gerard. guys. I'm, this is a shout out to our team. This could be the first year ever where the entire we team need Richardson tags out. to kill one. Yeah. T-Bar. T-Bar is in He's Kansas in them. Right He's now. in them. He's em. seeing a lot of bucks. He's, it's only a matter of time before Barron kills a Kansas buck. All right. It's well, with happen. that being said, guys. He's got no deer in Wyoming. So he's he doing he, he'll he gets find to one. Illinois. With that being said, it's November. It's the favorite time that we wait for. So grab your bow. Get out in the woods. Milk me, Johnny. 
I'm not gonna. <laughs> you could. He's got nipples. Look at all this, like, there's like weird, like fatty, dude, feel this. I like. <laughs>